Hi guys. It is just a gloomy, dreary, yuck day. <clears throat> Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, here in the Finger Lakes of New York, where we are not going to see the sun, oh, for three or four days, and I don't know when we're going to see 70 degrees again, so the little dog and I are hiding out here in inside today on this gloomy Tuesday, May 28, 2019. So what we're doing today is I'm preparing for my interview with Australian science writer Julian Cribb. And uh, so I am sitting here reading a bunch of Julian's uh, essays and book chapters and whatnot. And to whet your appetite for this interview, which might be a few weeks out because we're piling up with interviews here at Collapse Chronicles, uh, I'm going to read from a couple of, of Julian's essays to let Julian describe to you what is unfolding on this planet here uh, in the 21st century. He is the author of Surviving the 21st Century, which will be the center of our discussion. But in this article from the Sydney Morning Herald, uh, Julian is asking, is looking at human extinction and whether human extinction is possible. Yes, and this is coming back, going back to 2014. So we will see, I will ask uh, Julian if he still <coughs> agrees with his conclusion from 2014. In recent years, a number of prominent figures have warned of the possibility of human extinction as a result of man-made climate change. How could it come about that a species so intelligent, flexible, and well-equipped could potentially destroy itself? Surely, it must be grand hype. Well, no, not really. But extinction theory does not depend entirely on climate change, at least in the first instance, Rather, it depends on human behavior and our response to peril. And then uh, he breaks down uh, the main arguments of how climate change is going to kill us all literally in the 21st century. And then he looks at nuclear weapons blah, 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 but I really wanted to get to another article. I will put the link to this, or to this article uh, in the description to this video, and, but we're going to jump down to the bottom of this one and then uh, head over to the next one. All right. <clears throat> However, in a classic case of improvident human behavior, and, and remember, this was years before Donald Trump took office or Jair Bozonaro. However, in a classic case of improvident human behavior, a global energy stampede is taking place as oil, gas, coal, tar sands, and other miners who, being technical folk, understand quite clearly what they are doing to the planet, rush to release as much carbon as possible, as profitably as possible, before society takes the inevitable decision to ban it altogether. Thanks to them, humanity is not sleepwalking to disaster so much as racing headlong to embrace it. Do the rest of us have the foresight and the guts to stop them? 
our ultimate survival will be predicated entirely on our behavior, not only on how well we adapt to unavoidable change, but also how quickly we apply the brakes. Which form of human behavior prevails will probably settle the extinction argument one way or the other. It is our call. And of course, since Julian wrote those words in April of 2014, five years have elapsed and we have seen the election of Donald Trump and Jair Bozonaro, among, among others. Uh, we have seen uh, carbon emissions skyrocket on this planet. We are emitting much more carbon than we were five years ago. I don't, I don't know where the CO2 parts per million index was five years ago, right around 400. It's now at 415. Every indication on every single level uh, is that we are rushing headlong into embracing our own extinction uh, a hell of a lot more in 2019 than we were in 2014. But anyway, we're going to move along to uh, <clears throat> Julian's essay. He is now, we're going to go to November of 2017 to see what Julian was sounding like three and a half years after writing that story about whether or not we can avert uh, human extinction, he's now looking at whether or not we're going to be able to avert ecocide. In the view of most thinking people, the human, well, which is about 1% of the population, in the view of uh, most thinking people, the human species is more likely to earn its end in either a nuclear Armageddon or an episode of uncontrollable global overheating. There is now a third and more intractable scenario by which our tenure on planet Earth may be terminated. Ecocide. Ecocide? Sounds like another greeny scare story. Well, maybe, until you pause to consider that, according to the British medical journal The Lancet, nine million people died of ecocide, i.e. pollution, just last year. That is two more, that is two million more victims per year than perished in World War II. Ecocide is death caused by the collapse or vitiation of the systems that support life, including human life. <coughs> Last month, the scientific journal PLOS One reported in a disturbing new study carried out in Germany that three quarters of flying insects in conserved areas had vanished in just 27 years. Such insects are responsible for pollinating 80% of the world's wild plants and trees and a third of all of our food crops, besides feeding birds, frog, fish, reptiles, and mammals. This follows reports in recent years by the World Wildlife Fund that 58% of large animals, birds, and fish on land and at sea have disappeared in the last 40 years. Between 30 and 50% of all species may be gone by mid-century. At the same time, in the oceans and coastal waters, 415 huge dead zones, places where no fish 
or ordinary marine life can exist are spreading around the planet. Equally unsettling and even closer to home, a scientific study of almost 50,000 human males in North America, Europe, Australia, and New Zealand found that sperm counts had fallen by 50 to 60 percent since 1973. Whatever is wiping out insects and animals is also wiping out human fertility, which of course is the one ray of hope in, the all, in all of this. A subtler and more insidious indicator is the worldwide rise in mental disorders suicide, depression, Alzheimer's, autism, substance abuse, Parkinson's, etc. estimated by the World Health Organization to affect 450 million people worldwide at any one time and one person in every six in Western countries. <coughs> the common thread here and the most parsimonious explanation is that the human brain and reproductive system, as well as those of insects and other animals, are <coughs> intensely sensitive to their chemical environment and easily poisoned by toxins or fooled by chemicals that mimic the body's natural hormones. Total human chemical emissions, and this was five or three years, two years ago, are conservatively estimated at over 250 billion tons per year, four times the scale of our climate emissions. There are 144,000 man made chemicals and 2,000 more are added each year. It now takes 18,000 different chemicals to grow, process, and package the world's food. The deeper explanation, which few people and almost no governments or large corporations fully grasp, is that, as U.S. forest ecologist Glenn Berry puts it, the human population bomb has already burst. Since 1900, human numbers have quadrupled. Of course, uh, he is a breeder, just in case you were wondering. Since 1900, human numbers have quadrupled. At the same time, our use of resources per person has increased tenfold compared with those that sustained our ancestors just four generations ago. Thus, we now use and release 40 times more stuff to live unimaginably more than we did in 1900. As Paul Ehrlich framed the issue, quote, the idea that we can just keep growing forever on a finite planet is imbecilic, close quote. Yet our governments, businesses, banks, media, and many individuals remain hypnotized by the mantra of eternal growth, warning voices like those of Paul Ehrlich, Pope Francis, David Suzuki, Jane Goodall, Richard Heinberg, Sylvia Earle, and E.O. Wilson are still dismissed as nuisances whose intent is to disrupt the smooth business of plundering the Earth's natural resources and the worldwide release of contamination. 
What the latest scientific shows, however, is that the great dying, as people are starting to call this area, applies not just to bees, birds, fish, plants, and animals. It applies to humans, too. Huh. The Lancet Commission on Pollution and Health makes it plain that the polluting substances we release through all of this production are heavily implicated in a pandemic of premature death from cancer, lung diseases, cardiovascular and circulatory disease, diabetes, suicide, and other disorders. To this can be added the toll taken by climate change, famine, military conflicts, and social dislocation, which also reflect the wider decline of the Earth's life support systems. Although it does not appear yet in any formal statistics, ecocide is becoming the predominant way by which humans as individuals meet their premature end in our hot, overcrowded world. The quest in which, which so far few outside the specialized professions of science have dared to raise is whether all of this can precipitate a global ecological decline so severe as to endanger human survival. Yet, we already know the answer. <clears throat> In Collapse, author Jared Diamond posited that several civilizations have already met their end in such a way. <clears throat> Human extinction by ecocide is not unthinkable. <clears throat> Indeed, the one thing that can assure such a fate is refusing to think about it. As most societies, governments, media, and the global monetary system presently do. Walking out on the highway with your eyes tightly shut and ears blocked is no way to dodge an oncoming truck. <clears throat> it follows that if the human species is not to perish by ecocide, the absolute prerequisite is risk awareness. We need, to, we need an informed society and an informed discussion about how best to prevent it. As I argued in my book, Surviving the 21st Century, one way to do this is develop a human survival index which takes account of all the main factors which imperil our future and represents them as an easy to understand number so people can clearly see whether the risk is growing or receding. Take a wild guess which way every risk is going on this planet. Today, Everyone with media access is informed about the weather forecast, the state of the stock market, the price of houses, or monetary exchange rates. Yet, they are told nothing of any practical use to human survival. It is time to amend this universal ignorance before it consumes us. <laughs> Good luck uh, with this. And uh, so, uh, 
You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit conflicted by Julian Cribb, and we need to talk about this because he states that this man states that he is not a doomer, and then he clearly states he is not an optimist and he is not a doomer. Uh, so we're going to figure out uh, exactly what Julian Cribb is. Uh, I guess when I talk to him today and we will, the interview will be out in a few weeks. Anyway, it is a dreary day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, so I don't know what to tell the little dog about whether we're going out. You don't want to go out in that mess. Bye, guys.